the necessary and sufficient condition for the vector function f t of the scalar variable t to have a constant magnitude is dot product of f vector and its derivative. This should be equal to 0. So because it's a necessary and sufficient condition here also we have to prove both the ways. Right? First, suppose we are having the vector function which is having the constant magnitude. I need to show that dot product of f vector and its derivative is 0. Then the other way, if this dot product is 0 then I need to show that f vector is having the constant magnitude. So let's start with the proof. Suppose I first take my f vector to be a constant magnitude and I have to prove this dot product to be equal to 0. So let vector f it is a vector function Of constant magnitude. Constant magnitude means having the constant length. Right? Now since suppose I take the dot product of f vector with itself, so according to the remark I will get mod of f vector, mod of f vector cos of theta. Now what is the theta? Theta will be 0 because I'm having I'm having the same vector, the dot product with the same vector. Right? So there is no angle. So this cos of theta is 0. That means this is cos of 0 degree which is equal to mod f vector mod f vector which is finally mod of f vector square. This is your constant, which is constant. It is given that it is having the constant magnitude. So this is constant. So therefore, if we take the derivative of this dot product, because my dot product is constant, that means its derivative is 0. So derivative of a constant number is 0 or variable is 0. <clears throat> this implies, let's write the um, form for the dot product. How we write the derivative for the dot product? Yes, first vector, derivative of the second vector, their dot product plus derivative of the first vector and its dot product with the second one. So this is equal to 0 which implies 2f vector dot df by dt is equal to 0 which implies f vector dot df by dt is equal to 0 which is a required necessary condition, right? So we reached here, which is the required necessary condition. Very good. Now we need to prove the other way, the converse part. Conversely, Suppose f vector dot df vector by dt is equal to 0. So we just have to reverse the steps. This implies multiply 2 on both the sides. You will get 2 times f vector dot product with df by dt is equal to 0. Then This implies f dot df by dt plus f dot df by dt. Okay, I write the other way. 
df by dt dot f vector this is equal to zero which implies this is nothing but the derivative of the dot product of f vector with f vector so this is equal to zero whenever the derivative for any vector zero that means such vector is a constant so this dot product is constant which means mod of f vector square is constant why because what is the value for dot product this is mod of f mod of f cos of theta where theta is 0 degree so you get this is 1 which is equal to mod of f vector square right this implies if the square of this mod is constant that means mod of f is constant so therefore <clears throat> if the mod of the vector is constant that means the vector function sorry f has a constant magnitude which is your required sufficient condition very good hence the condition is sufficient easy easy to prove very easy to prove. Here ends up the proof. 